constitution as it appears on the order paper, then you now elucidate your arguments. Honorable Speaker, thank you. I beg to move the following motion. That pass one to the provisions of Article 152.6 of the Constitution and Standing Orders 64.1a and 66. This House resolves that the President dismisses the Honorable Franklin Mithika Linturi from the Office of the Cabinet Secretary for the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development on the following grounds. One, gross violation of the Constitution. A, violation of Article 2 and 10, 1 C of the Constitution. That the that Honorable Franklin Mithika Linturi, acting as the Cabinet Secretary responsible for the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development, appears to have committed gross violation of these constitutional provisions by one, not undertaking public participation with leaders, stakeholders, or even departments within the ministry in the implementation of far-reaching policy decisions on the procurement and distribution of fertilizer therefore violating the provision of the Constitution on national values and principles of good governance insofar as he acted as a state officer to make and implement a public policy to approve the procurement and distribution of fake fertilizer contrary to recommendations of the National Cereals and Produce Board, an agency in the ministry, and to by approving procurement and distribution of fake fertilizer by the National Cereals and Produce Board discloses a gross violation of national values and principles of good governance insofar as he acted as a state officer to make and implement a public policy to approve the procurement and distribution of fake fertilizer contrary to Article 10 1B of the Constitution. B, gross violation of Article 46 of the Constitution. That one Franklin Mithuka Linturi, acting in his role as the Cabinet Secretary responsible for the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development, appears to be in gross violation of this constitutional provision by one, infringing on, on consumers' rights to goods and services of reasonable quality and to the protection of their health, safety, and economic interests by approving the procurement and distribution of fake fertilizer and two, approving the budget for procurement and distribution of fake fertilizer by the National Cereals and Produce Board, thereby violating consumers' rights to goods and services of reasonable quality and to the protection of their health, safety, and economic interest as he approved the procurement and distribution of fake fertilizer contrary to Article 46 of the Constitution. C, gross violation of Article 73 of the Constitution, that the conduct of one Honorable Franklin Mithika Linturi, acting in his role as a cabinet secretary responsible for the Ministry of Agriculture, and livestock development appears to be a gross violation of this constitutional provision insofar as the public trust was exercised in a manner that is inconsistent with the purposes and objects of the constitution. He failed to demonstrate respect for the people, failed to bring honor to the nation, dignity to the office, and failed to promote public confidence in the integrity of the office, contrary to Article 73, 1A, 1, 2, 3, and 4 of the Constitution. D, gross violation of Article 201 of the Constitution. That one Honorable Franklin Mithika Linturi, acting in his role as the Cabinet Secretary responsible for the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development, appears to have committed a gross violation of this constitutional provision by, pro by approving and procurement and distribution of fake fertilizer by the National Cereals and Produce Board. This amounts to a gross violation of principles on public finances, finance 
insofar as public money is concerned, and that public money was not applied in a prudent and responsible way when he approved the procurement and distribution of fake fertilizer contrary to Article 201D of the Constitution. <clears throat> E, gross violation of Article 232 of the Constitution. That the Honorable Franklin Mythical Inturi, the, the Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture and Livestock Development, appears to have committed a gross violation of this constitutional provision where he outlined in his written submission as an agri written submission as a response to the fertilizer subsidy program to the Departmental Committee on Agriculture and Livestock, misleading information that the National Cereals and Produce Board, NCPB, signed an agency agreement with 51 Capital Africa Diatomide Industries on 31st March 2022 for supply and distribution of GPC diatomide diatomaceous for its commercial function, and that the product was not sold as a chemical fertilizer, but as a soil conditioner, violating the values and principles of public service duty. Public service, duty to use resources efficiently, effectively, and economically, contrary to Article 232 of the Constitution. Serious reasons for believing that Cabinet Secretary has committed that is number two, ground number two. Serious reasons for believing that the cabinet secretary has committed a crime under national law. A. Serious reasons for believing the cabinet secretary has committed, Honorable Speaker, protect me from the Deputy Speaker, has committed a crime under Section 100 and 101 of the Penal Code, Cap 63. That one Franklin Mythical Inturi, acting in his role as the Cabinet Secretary for the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development, issued a directive to officials of Kells Chemicals to attend a press conference and issue a statement from the National Cereals and Produce Board. His subsequent closure of the factory and declaration of it as a crime scene due to the company's refusal to participate in the staged press conference discloses grounds that there are serious reasons for believing that the cabinet secretary has committed a crime under national law, including but not limited to the offenses involving abuse of office and false claim by a person employed in the public service control to section uh, 100 and 101 of the Penal Code, Cap 63. <clears throat> B, serious reasons for believing the Cabinet Secretary has committed a crime under Section 353 and 355 of the Penal Code, Cap 63. That one Honorable Franklin Mythical Inturi, the Cabinet Secretary for the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development, is currently under investigations by the Director of Public Prosecutions and the Director of Criminal Investigations, and is facing arrest, charging prosecution and institution of criminal proceedings in relation to six pending civil, commercial, and family suits. This discloses grounds that there are serious reasons for believing that the Cabinet Secretary has committed a crime under national law, including but not limited to offenses involving uttering false documents, and procuring execution of documents by false pretense, pretenses, contrary to sections 353 and 355 of the Penal Code, Cap 63. <clears throat> number three, gross, ground number three, gross misconduct. That one, Honorable Franklin Mythical Inturi, acting in his role as the cabinet secretary responsible for the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development by approving procurement and distribution of fake fertilizer 
by National Serious and Produce Board in so far as being a state officer. One, has failed to exercise public trust in the best interest of the people of Kenya. And this amounts to gross misconduct contrary to Section 8 of the Leadership and Integrity Act, Cap 185C. Two, has failed in the performance of his duties to the best of his ability to carry out the duties of the office efficiently and honestly, and to carry out the duties of a transparent and accountable manner. And, his, and this amounts to gross misconduct contrary to Section 10A and B of the Leadership and Integrity Act, Cap 185C. Three, has failed to demonstrate professionalism in carrying out duties of the office in a manner that maintains public confidence in the integrity of the office. And this amounts to gross misconduct contrary to Section 11A of the Leadership and Integrity Act, Cap 185C. Number four, Honorable Speaker, that he misled the public by submitting false information to a departmental committee of the National Assembly that GPC diatomaceous was distributed as a soil conditioner and not as fertilizer. And this amounts to gross misconduct, contrary to Section 29 of the Leadership and Integrity Act, Cap 185C. You may omit to read the names of those who signed the motion since you gave them to the House when you gave notice. Honorable Speaker, I will be relying on evidence marked as Annex Chair 1. A. That is a letter from Ahmed Nasir to uh, DCI, Criminal Investigations, uh, a letter which was produced in the committee of this House, Honorable Speaker. That is Annex Chair 1. My Annex Chair B, Honorable Speaker, I will be referring to a document from Kenya Bureau of Standards, a, a document submitted by the Managing Director of, of Bureau of Standards to the Departmental Committee on Agriculture and Livestock in regard to fertilizer subsidy program and XJP. Honorable Speaker, I will be referring to a document, Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development Response on Fertilizer Subsidy Program by Honorable Mithika Linturi, Cabinet Secretary, submitted to the committee on March 24th, Annex C. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I'll be referring to a, a document marked Annex D of National Serious uh, and Produce Board where it entered into a merger aimed at lowering fertilizer prices. Honorable Speaker, I'll be referring to a document from the courts my, uh, as Annex E uh, of uh, Honorable Franklin Mithuko Linturi, first petitioner, Emily Nkorate Buantai, second petitioner, Anticon Limited, third petitioner, versus Director of Public Prosecutions and others, Honorable Speaker, as Annex E. Honorable Speaker, I'll be referring to a press statement from, by Law Society of Kenya as Annex F. Honorable Speaker, I want to thank you sincerely for redefining the dignity of this House as an oversight body comprising people's representatives of Kenya when all other bodies, systems, do not work, the Kenyan citizenry relies on this house. And Honorable Speaker, from the onset, I want to make it clear that this is not a, 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 a one-party motion. That this motion is indeed 
about the Kenyan people, Honorable Speaker. It is not a UDA motion. It is not an ODA motion. It is not a Zimio motion, Honorable Speaker. And it is not Kenya Kwanza motion. This motion is about the people of Kenya versus one mythical Nturi. Honorable Speaker, it is not a motion against the people of the Meru community. We have many Meru, uh, people from the Meru community who are very good people, Honorable Speaker. And some of the, who, them are seated in this house. This is a motion that seeks, Honorable Speaker, to, to, to assist Kenyan farmers who are now not going to harvest because of bad, bad fertilizer, Honorable Speaker. This is a motion that is going to wipe the tears of Kenyan farmers who are now disjointed and now uh, uh, do not know what happens, Honorable Speaker. That this minister, Honorable Speaker, because of time and I'm sure uh, all these documents have been uh, 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 circulated to members. I'll just be going briefly on, uh, uh, on these issues. That Honorable Speaker, I take you to the ground number two. Honorable Speaker, ser serious reasons for believing that the Secretary has committed a crime under national law. Mr. Speaker, on the ground of serious reasons for believing that the Cabinet Secretary has committed a crime under this law, I wish to submit as follows. That the conduct of one Franklin Mithika, acting in his role as the Cabinet Secretary responsible for the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock contained in the, in the contents of a letter dated 19th April 2024 by Ahmed Nasir, Senior Counsel, addressed to Mr. Amin Mohammed Ibrahim, the Director of Investigations, titled Manufacture and Distribution of Fertilizer, submitting that Mr. Linturi, the Cabinet Secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock, on mobile number 0722-218-000, made calls to Mr. Devesh of Kells Chemicals on 10th April, at around 9 a.m., directing him to attend a press conference at Jacaranda Hotel and confirmed that the need for him to use statements as shared with him by Mr. Kimote of the National Cereals and Produce Board by the press conference and his subsequent issuance of orders of closing the factory and declaring it a crime scene against the law, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Devesh of Kells Chemicals' refusal to participate in the staged press conference discloses grounds that there are serious crimes in believing that the cabinet secretary has committed a crime under national law, including but not limited to the, to the offenses listed under chapter six against abuse of office involving offenses against abuse of false claims by a person employed in the public service, contrary to section 100 and 101 of the Penal Act, Cap 63, of the laws of Kenya. Attached is a letter dated 19th from Ahmed Nasir. Honorable Speaker, I want to draw the attention of these members, of this Honorable House, that a minister went and committed a crime. A minister authorized distribution of fertilizer, of fake fertilizer, Honorable Speaker, as it was presented to the Committee of Agriculture. But when things started going south, Honorable, Honorable Speaker, this minister went and looked for Kells company to take responsibility. This minister ordered the CEO of NCPB, National Produce, National Cereals and Produce Board, to go and write a press statement, to go and admit liability so that he can save the minister. Honorable Speaker, that is wrong. It depicts a picture of a person who is not fit to serve. If Honorable Inturi in this matter was clear in his mind that he is clean, that he has not done any wrongdoing, why did he go 
and prepare a state a, a press conference, a press release through CEO of National Cereals and Produce Board to force honorable people to try and force innocent business people to admit liability on his behalf. It paints a picture of a wrong public servant who is not fit to be anywhere in service of the people of Kenya. That in paragraph two of the letter, Ahmed Nasir is a senior counsel. This was submitted to the Committee of Agriculture in this house. Therefore, these materials become part and parcel of the properties of this house. That in paragraph two, Ahmed Nasir, senior counsel, indicates that he writes the letter on behalf of his client, Scale Chemicals Limited, to set out the factual circumstances surrounding the distribution of the alleged substandard fertilizer. Mr. Speaker, I have tabled already the letter, Mark Annex to one, and invite the House to direct its attention to paragraph two of the letter. Honorable Speaker, and I read, further to the foregoing, we feel inclined to suggest that as you assess individual responsibility in the light of an overall evaluation of complicity, the conduct and involvement of one Mr. Franklin Mythical Inturi, the, the Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock, and Mr. Joseph Kimote, the Managing Director, National Cereals and Produce Board, should be scrutinized. Our clients informed us of the attempts by the two public officers to distort the correct account of what transpired and to present a counter-narrative whose end was to incriminate our client through intimidation and threats and to absolve other parties that had been adversely mentioned in the scandal this occurred on the following dates. Honorable Speaker. A. On 4th of April 2024, Mr. Davesh Patel, the Chief Operating Officer of our client, received a call from Mr. Kimote at around 9.45 a.m. from mobile number 0721-696-127, informing him of the need to prepare a letter to MEMS following the press release by NCPB recalling 3,000 bags of fertilizer manufactured on 5th March 2024 and of batch numbers as indicated, Mr. Speaker. Further, Mrs. Lorraine Karani of N National Cereals and Produce Board from mobile number 0722 310 at around 10, 11.30 a.m. asking him to report to NCPB headquarters at around 3.30 p.m. He later received a call from Collins Ngetich at around 11 on the mobile. Mr. Speaker, what comes out is that a minister who has committed a crime, but a minister who is hell-bent to try and involve other people who are not part of this system. And that is why we are saying the Minister for Agriculture is not fit, Honorable Speaker, a crime in our constitution, I will move on, Honorable Speaker, that in paragraph three of the letter, Mr. Amir Nasir suggests that the director of criminal investigations assesses individual responsibility in light of an overall evaluation of complicity, the conduct and involvement of Franklin Mithika Linturi, the cabinet secretary, minister of agriculture, livestock, and Joseph Kimote, the Managing Director, National Cereals and Produce Board. Honorable Speaker. Honorable, right. Honorable Amboka, you have about two minutes to go. I will uh, exercise my discretion and give you an additional five minutes. Honorable Speaker, it is very clear, uh, and I want members to read 
now that I do not have the time, it is very clear that the minister committed crime. It is very clear that the minister planned and there was an intention for Honorable Franklin Mithika Lijuri to commit a crime. Honorable Speaker, he went ahead and tried to cover up this crime. In law, there is nowhere that the minister has any mandate to go and close a factory. Honorable Speaker, that is not part of the mandate assigned to the Minister for Agriculture. We can see a rogue minister going to Kels uh, industry, Honorable Speaker, trying to close down the factory. Honorable Speaker, all this leads to a cover-up by Honorable Mithika Linturi, and that is why I'm asking members of this House, members of goodwill, representatives of the people of Kenya, that we find it fit that the President dismisses Honorable Mithika Linturi from office because, Honorable Speaker, the net effect of, 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 Mithika, of what Mithika Linduri did is that we are not going to have food. We support good intentions by His Excellency President William Ruto to ensure that Kenya is safe in terms of food, to ensure that Kenya has food that we can even uh, uh, export to our, our, our sister countries, Honorable Speaker. But we have a president with good intention. We have a minister who cannot implement the vision of his appointing authority. Honorable Speaker, this House should find it necessary that we recommend to the President that Mithika Linturi must vacate office. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Mithika Linturi has so many cases, some of them active, as I've indicated and proved, and as I've tabled in the annex just here, Honorable Speaker, that the minister has no time to concentrate on his, on his work, Honorable Minister, Honorable Speaker. The Honorable Minister moves from court to court. This is a person who is not fit under Chapter 6 to hold any office in Kenya, even a junior office of a, a, junior office of a messenger in this republic, Honorable Speaker. I want to plead with my colleagues. I want us to regain the integrity of this house, honorable members. I want us, this house to go back to those days when parliament was parliament, when parliament was for the people, by the people. Honorable Speaker, I will be seeking members of this house to support that we send Honorable Mithika Linduri home so that the farmers in the counties of Bungoma, the farmers in the counties of Transoya, Nandi, the farmers in Meru, the farmers in Kiambu, Honorable Speaker, the farmers everywhere in this country that can have reprieve, Honorable Speaker, I will be relying heavily on the goodwill of this House. Honorable Speaker, I leave it to the House. It is a moral question. It is not a political question. I can look straight in the eyes of these members. And I would want to tell you this is not about party lines. It's not about being whipped. It is about standing with the Manainji. It is about standing with the Chorotich. It is about standing with the Nekesa. Honorable Speaker, it is about standing with Wamboi. It is about standing with the the, the smallest of farmers who do not even afford money, but the only, the only mistake they do is to trust government, that they trust a government agency, they trust National Cereals and Produce Board, they trust the President of the Republic of Kenya, they trust that government cannot give them a raw deal, Honorable Speaker. They go and purchase fertilizer from National Cereals and Produce Board, a national agency a government agency, it turns out that they've purchased sand, they've purchased rocks. It is a moral question, Honorable Speaker. I do not know how anyone in their sound mind can want to side with such a rogue minister. Honorable, Honorable Speaker, I submit. Who is seconding your motion? You say, I beg to move, not to submit. Honorable Speaker, 
I beg to move. I would uh, ask Honorable Kibagendi, Honorable Sarah was to second, but uh, she's a bit late. I would ask Honorable Kibagendi to come and uh, second. Uh, Honorable Speaker, as the Honorable Member uh, from Bumula has said, I second this motion. And indeed, this is not just a political, uh, this is not just political, this is, just, this is a moral issue. And I understand sometimes in this house, we get to levels where we compete uh, on political uh, affiliations, but on this particular matter where the CS is genuinely and criminally involved in this particular issue of denying Kenyans their right, denying Kenyans their opportunity to produce, to ensure that we have food security in this country. It is prudent and necessary that we take it as a moral issue so that we deal with it. We need to demonstrate to Kenyans that as a house, we can also stand with them. It is not political. This is a moral issue. I support. Thank you. All the honorable members, members on their feet, take your seats. Order. Honorable members, I now propose the question, which is that pursuant to the provision of Article 1526 of the Constitution, and standing order 641A and 66 